In this lecture, we are going to focus on the problem formulation behind the Gaussian mixture models. So the problem we start with is that where we have already fixed uh, the number uh, capital K um, of um, Gaussian distributions contributing to uh, our model. And <clears throat> they are all uh, in terms of some mean, mu k, and some covariance matrix, uh, sigma k. And the model, the overall model that we define is that of a probability distribution of x, and uh, I'm also indicating the parameters theta, x uh, given <coughs> parameters theta, is really the sum of all these models. So it's going to be sum from one to capital K. <clears throat> and we have the weights uh, in front of all these <clears throat> uh, different Gaussian distribution X with respect to mu K and sigma K. And remember that the uh, weights, <clears throat> they are numbers between zero and one in such a way that the sum <clears throat> from one to capital K to of PK is exactly one. And this theta that we have here is just a vector collecting all these parameters we have. So theta is going to be defined as really the set mu k, sigma k, and we're even adding these, these weights. They, they also have to be deduced uh, in an optimal way. And um, this is for all k from one to capital K. So <clears throat> this is the um, formulation of the model. We, we have these distributions and we take the sum. And um, <clears throat> what we would like to, to do is we would like to learn the parameters uh, in such a way that um, our model explains the data in the best possible way. And this is going to be done at least now to start with <clears throat> in terms of the maximum likelihood. So <clears throat> the maximum likelihood formulation is going to, to, to assume that we have a training data set, X, uh, which is given by data points X1, Xn, as usual. Um, and uh, all these uh, numbers, Xn, they are um, from R to power D, and they are independent and uh, identically uh, distributed. And um, they are from this unknown probability distribution P of X that we have to uh, deduce. And um, <clears throat> the way we go about this is uh, we are going to um, write down the likelihood. So meaning the probability of observing this particular data set given a set of parameters theta is really the product of observing each one of these data points um, given theta. And that's because they are independent and uh, identical. So the independent hypothesis plays a role in here. And because they are identically distributed, <clears throat> each one of these is going to be, according to our model, a sum of contributions from each one of these components uh, with weight uh, pk. And uh, the log likelihood, so as usual, we, we are applying the log likelihood, is going to be <coughs> logarithm of this probability. is really equal to, and um, we apply the logarithm to this product, which is going to transform it into a sum of logarithms logarithm of, and we have this one. And the this one, we are just replacing it as, as this. So it's really a logarithm applied to this particular sum. So it's logarithm applied to sum from one to k of pi k normal distribution xn given mu k and uh, sigma k. 
And um, we are just going to denote this uh, whole thing with, uh, you know, the log likelihood. I'm just going to use a calligraphic L for this one. And <clears throat> you can see now that we are running into a problem that we haven't had before. And that is that, you see, before, when we were doing this log likelihood, we could, in fact, um, really distribute the log inside whatever we had. Typically, this was a, uh, a multiplication in here. So it was nicely uh, splitting into sums of different factors. And then we were reasoning uh, our way through how to uh, maximize that likelihood. We were taking partial derivatives and so on. That kind of strategy here doesn't really work uh, beyond this particular point because we have all, all, of, all of a sudden a logarithm applied to a sum and the, 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 the logarithm will not distribute inside the sum. So in that sense, the mathematics of this already seems to be quite different and, and more difficult than what we've seen in the other chapters of the book. And that's going to suggest, uh, and in fact, we will see it um, in the next lectures, that this problem doesn't really have a analytic closed solution as we had in the previous chapters. And we will have to do, in fact, uh, more of an algorithmic kind of work, more of an iterative approximation kind of work to solve this problem. Now, obviously, uh, the idea is still sound that we want to maximize so the log likelihood, so uh, maximize uh, L. That's our goal, obviously. And for this, the basic idea that we would have to take partial derivatives is still sound. So we will still have to uh, find these uh, uh, maximum points of L among those that make zero, your, all your partial derivatives. So that will mean that we will still have this basic idea of calculating the partial derivative of L with respect to, for example, mu k. And, and we will set this to be uh, zero, which is the same as saying we will have to solve the equation when we calculate the uh, derivative of this with respect to mu, we are going to get that the sum of uh, from uh, one to n of, and you see all the, all the terms from this sum disappear because they are constant with, with respect to mu k, except for the value k that we are looking at. So we are left with just one single term from this sum, which is uh, the partial derivative of the logarithm of uh, um, this one with respect to mu k. And, and we set that to be <coughs> zero. And the same thing for, we will set out to have this partial derivative dl to d sigma k. And that one, we will also say that it's got to be matrix zero. And this is the same way as saying sum of from one to n, d log of p of xn with respect to theta, partial derivative with sigma k, and again, there is only one term from this sum, the other ones are uh, constant, it's got to be the uh, zero matrix. And finally, we have the partial derivative of L with respect to pk. Also, we are setting it to be uh, um, number zero. And that is the same as saying that the sum from one to n of this log p of xn given theta, partial derivative with respect to pk, this has got to be zero. <clears throat> and uh, we will see in the next lectures how to really um, find our way through uh, solving these equations, at least approximately and uh, how to find the solutions giving us the maximum likelihood solution to the problem.